obviously he hasn't made it out here today, but have you got an update on Andrew Swallow for him? Um, not really. I mean, we're, we're waiting on the update um, as well. I mean, look, initially we, we ruled him out pretty quickly on the night, um, but um, sometimes with concussion it can be a little bit confusing because what can look pretty significant early can, can also bounce back really quickly. And by sort of half time and, and post game, he was he was really positive. But um, with the, all the symptoms of concussion, you can get um, immediate onset, delayed concussion. So we're just going to have to wait. But um, at the moment, the, we're optimistic, but um, we won't be able to make a decision until later in the week. What about Brad and the other guys who've pulled up sore from the game? How, how are they looking for, for this week's game? Uh, we, we're more uh, positive uh, today than we were um, probably Saturday night um, with, with a few of them. So, um, but again, I, I wish I could give you more definitive information. I'm, I'm still waiting for that information myself. So, um, but what I can say is, is a similar um, line to what I've been saying the last few weeks in that we've got uh, really solid depth on our list and we've got a lot of players who have uh, been really pushing for senior selection and have just missed out um, and missed their opportunity due to the form of the team and the form of others in their position. So we're in a position, uh, I suppose the combination of our win-loss to this point and also the depth on our list that, that we won't have to make um, uh, rash decisions to try and get guys up to play if they're not right. If they're not right, we'll just bring the next player in and uh, no better example of that than, than Majak Dor coming in and replacing Todd Goldstein down in Hobart. And if we're in a similar position to something like that with a player in a different position, then you know, we won't hesitate to bring a new player in. So no one's been officially ruled out as yet? Not yet, no, no. Um, they're, all, they're all too good to be ruled out uh, right at the moment. Um, but we just need another couple of days to rule them in. So. Um, you know, hopefully by you know, Thursday morning we'll be in a really good spot to, to make those definitive calls. What about no, he looked a little bit probably not quite at his best on the weekend. Is he close to fully fit? Uh, yeah, we, again, he was um, the, the express instruction to our um, medical staff was, was a no-risk policy and, and if he was going to play he needed to be, to be uh, capable of producing his best. And you know, Goldie... Um, by his own admission, didn't play his, his best footy, but I think there was a, a few technical factors involved with that too, and, and we did some work on that yesterday. And um, you know, he'll be right to play this week, no problem at all. And and if he pulls up sore from training or anything like that, then you know you've seen that that Mad Jack can do the job for us, so we won't hesitate to make that call. And um, Todd, uh, um, all the coaching staff are not making an injury excuse for our performance on the weekend. It was yesterday review day, and how did that go down? Um, it was pretty straightforward, really. I mean, we, we, um, it's, it's quite often in a review after 28 or 24, 48 hours after the game that you can potentially have a different view. But our, our, our leadership group and our coaching staff had a very similar view to what we, what we did poorly um, on Monday that we had Saturday night. So um, it was pretty straightforward, to be honest. We, we think that um, while we didn't perform anywhere near our best, the, the things that we need to work on are, are pretty easily fixable. Brad, how much does this short week affect or alter the preparation? Oh, it affects the preparation a fair bit, but it doesn't um, affect the, the ability to recover. I think that's, that's something that, that our, um, our players joke about a little bit, that they prefer six-day breaks to eight-day breaks because it means training's a little lighter. Um, but six days is plenty of time to recover um, between games of football. Um, the important thing is that we do alter our, our training focus and, and we do alter our training load, which our sports science and medical team do a great job of. Jack, what was it like being in the midfield when Paddy Dangerfield was racking up 48 on the weekend? Was there a sense of helplessness about it at the stages? Oh, probably not helplessness. I mean, um, it was a bit frustrating in the fact that uh, we were getting beaten inside. Uh, that's something we pride ourselves on at North Melbourne and it's something we'll look to, to respond to this week inside and, and try and get the job done against the Hawks. So um, he's obviously a quality player and uh, if we had our time again, we might put a bit more time into him. But in saying that, you know, it was a bit hard uh, being a couple of blokes down. So um, we look forward this week and look forward to taking on the Hawks. Clashes with Hawthorne in recent years have been pretty physical at the best of times. So are you expecting that again on Friday night? Yeah, obviously. Hawthorne are a great team. Um, they've got some outstanding players through the midfield, up forward, down back, and uh, we expect nothing less than a, than a fierce contest. So um, we can't wait for Friday night. How much of a test is this, Jack, considering like you've lost to the Swans and, and the Cats? I guess Premiership fancies as well. Is it important to get this win? 
yeah, obviously every every win's important um, in the AFL in 2016, and uh, we'll leave no stone unturned in our preparation to try and get the job done on Friday night. And I think um, we've got a bit of improvement to do after last week's game, and a few areas we need to address, and we'll work on that at main training tomorrow and um, do our best on Friday night to get the job done. Draw doesn't ease up from here, Jack. I think the Crows off a six-day break over there, the bye then West Coast over there. Are you looking forward to that? It is a daunting uh, fixture in some regards, but I imagine exciting in others. Yeah, oh, it's definitely exciting. Um, you know, obviously to take the good teams on, especially at their home grounds, uh, is exciting for us. Uh, we've had a pretty good record away from home this year and, and in previous years, so um, obviously we won't look too much further than Friday night against Hawthorne to start. Um, but obviously, yeah, going forward, it's a big couple of weeks and um, we're really looking forward to the opportunity to take the good teams on. Probably one for both of you, actually, when you back in. Brad, um, you obviously you've played a lot of games that Eddie had over the years. Do you have a particular view on the Astro turf? Uh, surrounding the... Yeah. the um, I, not really. I mean, I, I think that's... I'll let Jack answer that as well. But from a coaching perspective, um, the, the surface that Eddie had, I think, has never been better. I mean, um, go back to, to 2000... Um, 2001, uh, those uh, even 2003, um, the, the surface was really poor, and so the, the surface has um, never been better. And I think the astroturf part of that is just to make sure that the ground, that the part of the ground that gets a lot of wear, um, holds up. So I mean, it's we can't speak highly enough of the surface that Eddie had, but uh, perhaps a player's perspective on the astroturf is a bit better. Yeah, I'll, I don't have an issue with it. I've never sort of had any dramas, or I don't think any of our teammates have either. So. Um, yeah, I don't think there's too much to worry about there. Given the short break for the, the VFL side to, to, between that and the uh, Friday night's game, Brad, did you take any players out of the Werribee game on Saturday just in case you might need them? Uh, yeah, we did. We um, uh, And that's just a risk management um, uh, decision. So uh, you know, three, three or four guys came out of that side, a few other guys played lower game time, and unfortunately that's just the vagaries of the, the VFL fixture. Um, it, it's obviously disappointing for Werribee um, because it significantly weakened their team. Um, you know, they're, they're, that's one of the challenges of being in an aligned uh, VFL team. But um, you know, the, it was the prudent thing to do. So um, we've got a really good squad to pick from this week, and um, part of that was making sure that you know the, the five-day break from the VFL to the AFL um, game wasn't compromised. No, no, Corey Wagner, one of those guys. Is he a chance of making his debut? Yeah, he's, he's probably one of the, the guys I've, I've mentioned over the last couple of weeks in, in being in a group of five or six players who we think has, has really put his hand up for senior selection. And um, we haven't, we've been able to be patient with him because of the form of the senior team and other players available, but he's, uh, he's been ready to play for a number of weeks. So um, if and when we need to call on him, we're confident he can do the job. Nahas definitely has a fraction bigger, but he can still play. Yeah, look, look it was a... It, it was a Compound dislocation, so that it's it. Sometimes they look terrible because the the, the bone pierces the skin. But um, but in uh, looking at the at the scans and and going back and analysing it really closely, that the dislocation is the only issue. The the um, it's not actually fractured. So um, we'll um, we expect a pretty quick turnaround from that.